interview of Mr. Alexander Arthur Jr. at Rochester Culver Road Armory, 25 April 2001. Interviewer is Lieutenant Colonel Robert von Hassel. Videographer is Mr. Wayne Clark. Uh, Mr. Arthur, tell me, where and when were you born? East Rochester, New York. And what year? 1926. And have you uh, lived here all your life? Except for military service. Tell us about your family, uh, your mother, your father. My mother uh, was born and raised in Edinburgh, Scotland. My father was born and raised in Basket, Scotland. Uh, they came here after the war. My father served with the uh, Edinburgh's own, which is the, the British Army. Um, when he came here with a lot of the other Scotsmen, uh, he uh, they worked in the car. He worked in the car shops un until he retired, and after that, he just took life easy and did uh, took care of his house. My mother raised my brother and I. Um, uh, then the during during World War II, when my brother and I were serving with the United States Marine Corps, uh, she worked for Minihams, which was a they made parachutes and she inspected the seams uh, uh, make, you know, make sure that they were, they, they were all right. So that happened and then my brother and I were discharged from uh, Great Lakes in, in World War II in 1946. Uh, then in uh, September of 50, we were recalled uh, under the reserve system for the um, for the Korean conflict. I, I stayed stateside all during the time. My brother served with the uh, 1st Marine Division in Korea. Um, fortunately, he came back unscathed and uh, we finished our service at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina and was uh, separated in September of 1951. I uh, received my uh, honorable discharge of course, needless to say, from World War II and also from the Korean conflict in 1953 and been, uh, I guess, civilian ever since, or however you want to put it. Let me ask you some questions. Um, first of all, uh, going back to your, when you were growing up in Rochester, um, your brothers, you had one brother and the I other? Have, I have a twin brother. Twin brother. Any sisters or other brothers? No. <clears throat> what did you think you wanted to be when you grew up? Uh, never get a thought. Mm -hmm. And how did you come to, uh, well, tell me about, do you remember where you were when Pearl Harbor was bombed? Yeah. Yeah, where were you? I was caddy in the Monroe Golf Club. Mm -hmm. And you just heard in about the, it? In the snow. In the snow. I was using a black golf ball. Ah. Winter rules. And uh, <coughs> you were out on the links when you heard about it? Well, we had uh, finished the uh, nine holes and had gone into, uh, gone up to the bar. Of course, needless to say, I, I had a Coke and so forth while the other gentleman mm -hmm. had a, a drink. And we saw on television that uh, Pearl Harbor had been bombed. Uh, we thought it was kind of a maneuver or something that they were talking about and so forth and didn't realize until I got home that afternoon that it wasn't a maneuver, it was the actual World War II. And uh, do you remember what you were thinking at the time? Or how did you react to the news? Well, I thought, well, I thought, was this really necessary? And what's going to be the outcome. Mm -hmm. So we just, uh, I was a freshman in, at the time, so I uh, completed high school, and when I graduated, uh, it was either volunteer or be drafted, so my brother and I, we decided to go with the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. So we were accepted and went into the Marine Corps, and of course, ended up at Paris Island for our uh, uh, boot training, then we were at sent up to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, where we uh, went into the machine gun platoon. So we traveled 
trained in the machine gun platoon. And then, uh, then we were reassigned and had a nice train trip all the way to San Diego, California. From there, we went on to Pearl Harbor, Guam, then into China, mm -hmm. and uh, spent nine months in China. We were stationed at uh, Chinguan Tao, which is the northernmost most ice free port in China, which was actually 12 miles from the Mukden border. Mm -hmm. So we stayed there, and uh, then one of the things we got to do was that um, uh, a British admiral came in, and we uh, escorted him to Tinsin. Mm -hmm where he was having a conference and so forth. And so we got to see Tencent for a couple of days and then came on back to uh, Tao, where we uh, finished up our service. And uh, then, the, uh, then, then came back. Uh, up where we were, we, all our food was brought in by freight. So we had the experience of unloading 50 pound boxes of oranges and potatoes and all that stuff. We also was assigned uh, out, the, out in the tracks, we call it the garden bridges, so that the, at that time, which is known as the Bollingens, which was the Chinese Eighth Root Army, mm -hmm. which, was, uh, which was now under the communists, so they, was, so they wouldn't blow it up. So we. Uh, so that, uh, that was our experience over there. So we came back home, and uh, my brother, he went to work for Todd's, which eventually became Burroughs. Mm -hmm. I went into the uh, banking business, and I was in the banking business for 38 years. And then when the banks consolidated after three or four years that we we were let go on the con and uh, I just uh, um, I just was out for a year and a half and then for the next 12 and a half years I delivered flowers and then retired after that and just stayed around the house bothering my wife now hmm. what about children do you have any children we uh, we have four children our our son is the oldest um, he completed 21 and a half years in the United States Army. He was, he was stationed in Korea where he met his wife and married her. And we have uh, two grandchildren, it's all for that. Mm -hmm. And then he came back and, uh, to uh, Fort Hood and then he made the rounds. He, we visited him for a time when he spent three years in Germany. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he was back in Germany for a couple of years before he was discharged. Our, our oldest daughter is, uh, works here in Rochester, as well as our second, and, uh, second daughter and, and third daughter. Mm -hmm. They all work here. Our second daughter is married. Our third daughter is. She has one child. And, uh, um, and Debbie has two. So we had, so we had uh, four children and five grandchildren. Hmm. Well, let's go back and talk about a couple of things. Um, you you volunteered with your twin brother. Yes, we enlisted. Yeah, we volunteered and enlisted. Did you stay together in the same unit? During World War II, we did. Mm -hmm. During the uh, Korean conflict, I stayed stateside, mm -hmm. and he went overseas. During World War II. Uh, with your twin brother, was it an identical twin or a fraternal twin? Uh, identical. Did that ever cause a problem or in the unit? Uh... Sometimes. If, in fact, as it is in boot camp, uh, when we were going through, we had three sets of twins. It must have got <laughs> confusing for your drill sergeants. Yeah. You know, they were, they were kind of rough. But... Um, we, we got through it, so forth. We started with 50, 59 men in boot camp, lost 10, came out with 59. Mm. So now when you got over to China, 
That must have been a very strange experience for somebody from, young man from Rochester, I mean, very different. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because up there, uh, the ones we came in contact were workers. They worked for the, the British. The British ran most of the stuff up at Chinguan Town, and they only had, wore two pieces of clothing, uh, insulated top, insulated bottom. Because we were in the working men's class, not like if we were in Peking or Ten Tenshin and so forth. And one of the amazing parts was that up there they got paid in flour. Hmm. No money. You see them every so often going back with a big bag of flour, which I assume they bartered somehow and exchanged it and so forth. And when we were on the track, as I said, most of our uh, stuff came in by train, so we would unload it. But um, to get extra stuff, sometimes we would uh, we, we would barter for eggs and so forth. Now, um, did you get a chance to to see any of anything else about the Chinese while you were there? We um, yeah, we got up to the Forbidden City. Mm -hmm. And so forth. What was that like? Well, I guess in, I never really gave it much thought. I just looked at it and said, there's another big palace. So forth. I guess, you know, just the name draws you to it. Never did get up to the Wall of China, mm -hmm. which I would like to have, but uh, things just didn't work out. Well, I've heard all sorts of stories about Ch China Marines and. Uh, what was your daily life like? Oh, uh, just uh, most of the time, just normal, you know, get up, have breakfast, uh, work around the compound, uh, clean, clean your weapons and so forth, um, have inspections, and uh, you had to keep your uh, rifle clean. I don't know about the Army, but in the Marine Corps, the M1 was not called a gun unless you wanted extra duty and so forth. It was a rifle. Right. So we had to be able to uh, strip the M1, put it back together in a minute, and make sure it was clean, your barrel was clean. So just a lot of military stuff just running around. Military, of course, you had the guard duty and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, the um, the ordinary Chinese, did they do they work for you, or did they do a lot of your? Yes, we had a houseboy that that took care of things, and we had uh, people that uh, did our laundry for us and so forth. Um, we up there, we didn't come in contact with really too many of the uh, Chinese people, just the ones that uh, mainly serviced us. Yeah, was it considered good duty in the Marines? Or? Well, it was, um, yeah, it, 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 it was nice over there. Were you ever concerned about the conflicts between the nationalists and the communists? Uh, no, for some reason it uh, didn't bother us too much because the Chinese Eighth Ruth Army then became the Bolivians. Mm -hmm. And um, we, uh, they, uh, they really didn't bother us. They, they, they started, stayed clear of us. And when you got back, you entered the Marine Corps Reserve? No, no, we didn't enter the Marine Corps Reserve until 50. I'm not sure exactly sure why we went back in because that's how we got caught for the Korean War. But between the end of World War II and Korea, you weren't drilling on weekends or? Oh, no, no. We, we were strictly civilians. Uh -huh. Strictly civilians. We got discharged out of Great Lakes and that was it. And when you got called uh, back for Korea, where did they send you and what did you do? We were sent to uh, tent camp. Tent camp Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, mm -hmm. and we stayed there until for about a month until we were processed to where we were going to go. 
and uh, let's see, I was sent. Oh, I was sent to Hadnot Point Camp Lejeune, uh, and from there I was um, post exchange. And after a period of time, we were sent up to uh, Little Creek, Virginia, to service the the Marines that were uh, on on duty, a uh, training, amphibious training, and so forth. So you were, you were working in a PX in Camp Lejeune or yeah. Little Creek? Yeah, both. Actually, I. I ended up working in a, um, uh, a a tailor shop. I worked with a lady in the tailor shop. Mm -hmm. She, uh, uh, we we took in the clothes for washing and so forth. So I, I worked I worked with her. My brother uh, flew overseas in January of '50, and. Um, Served with the Marine Corps over there and came back in July of '50, because all World War II veterans were repeat, were brought back to the States, mm -hmm. and he served uh, with a guard unit up there until we were discharged in September of 1951. How did you feel being recalled? You know. Well, I wasn't too happy about it. Um, I, I was not married at the time, so I, it didn't bother me. Uh, about that, but uh, I just figured, well, we're in it. Let's go. Let's see what happens. Caused a lot of problems for you in terms of work. No. No, my job was there when I got back. Mm -hmm. So. Now you said you were stationed in China, close to uh, Mukden. You're up, up north near Mukden. Up next to the Manchurian border. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not nine miles uh, from Mukden. About yeah, about twelve miles. Yeah. Did you ever hear anything while you were there about what the Japanese had done during World nope. War Two at Mukden? Nope. We never heard anything about the Japanese. The only thing that was uh, a little funny was that um, during the time we were stationed in uh, Chinguantao was that. The Japanese would bring in lumber uh, to into the port of Chinguantao, and we as Marines had to go aboard that Japanese ship to make sure the Chinese and 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 Japanese did not fight. So this was just after the war, which seemed kind of funny to us that here we had defeated the Japanese and was on the Chinese. Now here we are in the middle keeping the Chinese and the Japanese from fighting each other. The Japanese and Chinese, well, the Chinese still harbored a, a, a lot of animosity towards the Japanese? Well, I, I really don't know about that, but we, I guess they just wasn't going to make sure that they, uh, they fought. Now, when you were in uh, North China, did they still have uh, horse marines? Have what? Horse marines. I don't believe so. Okay. And I see in your file you mentioned something about uh, Master Gunnery Sergeant Lou Diamond. Oh yeah, when uh, when we had boot camp, um, he was uh, he was the one that uh, uh, greeted us when we got to the uh, center where where you got your clothes and so forth, whatever terminology you want to use. Mm -hmm. And that was Christmas Day, and he was a little upset that he had to uh, leave, uh, I guess, leave his home and come and process us. And he he made sure that we we knew that he was upset. Did you ever see him after that? No. No, I guess supposedly he got his reputation by putting a mortar down a Japanese ship. Blowing it up. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But that's that's a story that goes around. That's how we build up his reputation. Mm -hmm. Well, when you look back at it all, do uh, you think being in the Marines changed your life? No. Anything else in particular you you know comes to mind when you think about your military service? No, but I'm I'm glad I picked the Marine Corps. 
which which makes my uh, son and son kind of unhappy since he was all United since he was all Army. So we have a little discussion with that every once in a while. But uh, who wins? Hmm? Who wins? Well, I let him win. So, so you're proud that you were a Marine. Oh yeah, yeah. What is it that makes Marines so special? I I would say the training, training, the training, the training. Something, something ab about the training and so forth, and the spirit decor makes you proud to be a Marine. Now, like I haven't been in since September of '51, but when they um, hold hold these services down in Washington and uh, Clayton Powell says stand up when your uh, when your service is called of course mm -hmm. I'm in my living room and when they play the Marine Corps hymn I'm up and uh, or if they're playing the Marine Corps hymn other places and and I my wife just gives me a big smile because she knows how proud I am that I served in the Marine Corps. So I don't so, so I don't know about the rest of the guys, but somehow to me the Marine Corps puts a spirit in you and so forth and just makes you proud that you were a Marine. And uh, all that Marine training, it never gave you any advantage later on in life? or No. Because I went into the banking business and spent 38 years there, so the, the training, unless I, w I might say, uh, being able to the discipline, able to control yourself, uh, you know, think, mm -hmm. you know, before you act, maybe yes, but I, not not too much. Well, we're coming down towards the end of the tape here, so. Any other last thoughts or anything else you'd like to talk about? Uh, no. No, I, well, the, the only thing I think about is that when I came out of the, came out of the service, mm -hmm. I thought, well, this would be the end. If I'd have served, I served, that was it. And then, and then when my son graduated from high school, they were after him to join the Army, and. So he finally went in, and um, she served his 21 and a half years, and then came out, and then when my granddaughter graduated from high school, she was a basketball star for Fairport, went on to become a basketball star for MCC. Uh, they were still after her, and she just couldn't quite juggle the academic work for MCC. Uh, for, for for college in advance, so they offered them a pretty good deal. She went in the army, so I never figured there would be four separate generations serving in the military. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>